if you want to start tooling things in Resonite, you're going to need, well, the tools. Thankfully, Resonite gives you a folder full of tools to help you create and interact with everything. But there's so many, and they don't really tell you what they do, or sometimes they're just really vague. I know a lot of people who don't use the tools because they don't look at them, let alone even know about their existence. So let's go over all the default tools. I'll be quick, don't worry. Ready? This development tooltip is the most important tool within Resonite, and it's the best looking one. Just look at this thing. This thing lets you create new items, edit them, move and scale them, open the scene inspector, and countless other things. If you're doing any sort of development, you're gonna be using this tool. In fact, the dev tool is so powerful, I'm gonna put a little icon up here on any other tool that does a function, but can also be done with the dev tool. You'd be surprised how much this dev tool can actually do. Protoflux is the part of Resonite that either excites you or scares you. Protoflux is the programming language of Resonite, and the Protoflux tool is how you interact with it. Anything regarding Protoflux will be done with this tool. Now the Flux tool is very powerful, and with that comes great responsibility. And honestly, I don't want that responsibility. I would love to do a rundown of this tool, but that would just take way too much time. Trust me, I will show you how this thing works one day, but today is not that day. Just know that you don't have to be scared of Flux. It is just spaghetti. You can just eat it. The material tool lets you edit materials, or if you need, create a new one. With any material or image, pressing secondary while aiming at it will let you take the material. With the material in the tool, pressing primary on another mesh will apply the material to it. As long as you have the material orb in the tool, it'll basically apply to anything. If you need to create a new material, you can open the context menu and click eject. Or if you're in VR, you can just pull it out. On the context menu, you'll also notice that there's an option to convert any material. Say you have a metallic material that you want to convert to a tune material. You can easily do that here instead of completely recreating it. The shape tool is one of those tools that just does what it says. It just makes shapes. While equipped, holding primary will let you hold and drag out a shape. By default, it creates these cylinders, but you can cycle through the primitives by pressing secondary and you can see it changes right there. Honestly, if you want my opinion, if you have a dev tool tip, you might as well use that instead. It's as easy as hitting create new. The light tool is the only friend we have in these dark times. This lets you create a light by holding primary and then pulling outwards to control the intensity. You can turn them off too if you need to just by clicking on it with primary. Now in your context menu, you can change the color, type, and shadows of the light. You can even control the direction of the sun, which gives you probably one of my favorite context menu tooltips. The grappable setter tool is a very straightforward tool. Equip it, point it at something, and pressing primary will make it a grabbable thing. If you need the opposite, pressing secondary on something will make it no longer grabbable. Now the character collider setter tool will make you collide with things. Pressing primary on something will make it collidable so you can't walk through it. Conversely, pressing secondary makes it no longer collide. Another thing you could do is hit the grippable on the surface, which will let you use your hands to climb it. Also in the context menu, you'll see these ensure locomotion buttons, which just applies the locomotion setting to the world. Kind of confusing since the default worlds have most of these already, but if you happen to accidentally mess up and delete it, you can use this to get them back. The microphone tool lets you record your own voice and make a voice clip out of it. While you have it equipped, hold primary and Bird. whatever you say will be spawned out as an audio clip. It's a really easy way for you to use your own voice for any interaction that you might be creating. In the context menu, you can even choose the format it's recorded in. The glue tool is a tool. I mean, what it does is in the name, it glues meshes together. While you have it equipped, holding primary and pulling out will make the glue sphere appear. Now when you let go, it's going to glue any meshes together that were in the sphere. On the context menu, it'll let you choose whether to bake normal meshes together, skin meshes, which are meshes that have deforms like bones, and parent objects, which actually doesn't glue them together but puts them all in the same slot, which is nice if you want a non-destructive edit. Just try to be careful when using the glue tool because you'd be surprised how easy it is to glue yourself to something you didn't mean to. The mesh visibility tool helps you do two things, hide or show a mesh. With it equipped, using secondary will hide a mesh. And to enable a mesh, you just use primary. In the context menu, you can also change the shadow type and apply it with primary. Ever have someone or something you don't want to show in the camera? This tool lets you do just that. While you have it equipped, press primary on the thing you want to remove from the camera view and it's gone. You can also bring it back with secondary if you want. The color tool is like those eyedrop tools that you see in every image editor program. It takes a color from a sample and you can use that to apply somewhere else. While it's equipped, pressing secondary will sample the color of what you're aiming at. And once you have the color, pressing primary on another object will apply that color. You can also use the context menu just to choose a color, then apply it to something. The mesh tool is similar to the material tool where you can select a mesh by pressing secondary and then apply it to another mesh by using primary. I'm not entirely sure of the use case of this tool, but I can confirm that it does work. 
The rig mesh transfer tool is a bit complicated in what it does and doesn't always work properly, but when it does work, it's extremely useful and saves hours of time. What it does is you can take a rigged mesh, such as an avatar, and transfer that mesh over to an existing object. In simple terms, this is used to easily update an avatar if you need to update the mesh. Use secondary on the source mesh, which should be the new one you want to use, and then press primary on the old existing object. If it went perfectly, the mesh should be transferred and you should be done. If not, which might be likely, the wiki page on the tool has some good information on troubleshooting. The object slicer tool is definitely one of the cooler toys you can play around with. With the tool, pressing primary on an object will set up a plane. Now you see this small plane object, which is the visual on where the slicing plane is. Now if the object here passes on this plane, you can see it's going to get sliced. You can make some really cool effects and objects with this thing. While it's very limited in what it can do, it's still an effective tool when you know how to use it. The controller diagnostics tool shows us controller diagnostics. Very cool. The meter tool measures distances between two points. With it equipped, pressing primary will create a point. Pressing primary again on another point and you'll get the distance between the two points. This tool is used for confirming one thing. I am small. The context menu has lots of options, including changing how the points are placed, measuring more than two points, and measuring in local or global space. The labeler tool lets you label things. Press primary on something to attach a label to it, and then pressing primary on the text will let you edit the label. The line brush lets you draw lines. Big shocker. While it does let you draw in 3D space like this, wherever you want, drawing close to a surface like a picture or a whiteboard will snap it to the plane. Of course, you can also change the color and size in the context menu, but you can also change the thickness by grabbing and rotating the wheel around the tip of the tool here. Now you know all the default main tools, though there are even more tools to play with in the other folders too. But before I let you go, bonus tip! If you've ever looked at your wrist in VR, you'll see these little rectangle things here. This is actually a tool shelf where you can put tools and objects. If you have a tool equipped, aim your laser at your wrist and press primary and it'll snap right on there. You can even quickly hot swap the tools by tapping them with primary. I know there are multi tools out there that let you do everything with one single tool tip, but remember, switching to your sidearm is always faster than reloading. If you're on desktop, you can just use the number row on your keyboard to auto-equip the tools. And if you need more information on the tools, there's also the Resonate Wiki. And that's it! Miss